I've been in between jobs ever since I left college, doing different things here and there, odd jobs sometimes. It wasn't until I started as a 911 operator that I realized that's what I really wanted to do with my life. But it only been about four months when I received one of the most chilling, unexplainable, and spine-tingling phone calls of my life. The night it happened was a particularly grueling shift. I'd spent the last 10 hours dispatching police for the various houses. I was about two hours from finishing when I received a call from a little girl named Samantha. The following is a transcript of that call. 911 operator, what's your emergency? Hello, mommy's fallen over. What's your name, honey? Samantha. Okay, Samantha, can you tell me where you live? I don't know the address. Can you find me? Yes, Samantha, I can trace the call. Can you tell me what happened? Mommy's been acting all weird the past few days. Not sleeping at nights, going around scratching at the walls. I'm too scared to come out of my room. I was in bed and I started hearing this weird moaning sound. Mommy sounded like a zombie. And that's when I heard someone giggle. <laughs> What's Mommy doing right now, Samantha? Mommy's on the floor right now. She won't get up. Is she breathing? I don't know. I can't see her chest moving. I'm scared. It's okay, honey. Help is on the way. I'll need you to stay on the line until they arrive. Can you do that? Yes. Something's happening. What's happening? Mommy's twitching now. Her eyes are fluttering. That's when I hear the distinct sounds of someone moaning and the sounds of someone dragging something. I could hear Samantha's whimpering. Is someone coming? I'm scared. Yes, Samantha, they're not far away. What are those noises? It's Mommy. Samantha, what's Mommy doing? I'm hiding in my wardrobe. She's crawling on the floor like a tarantula. Her eyes have gone all weird. She's hissing and this weird foamy stuff is coming out of her mouth. Can she see you? I don't think she can see me yet. Is someone coming? Are they close? Yes, very close. Just then. <laughs> I heard Samantha whisper something. Samantha, are you okay? Mommy's walking backwards now. I think she knows where I am. Her black eyes are looking right at me. Please, I'm scared. Mommy's trying to hurt me. Samantha, what do you mean your mommy's walking backwards? It's all upside down. Her legs are twisted the wrong way. Her body is normal, but her head is all backwards too. Do you know when you twist your Barbie's head? It's like that. She's shaking as she walks, kind of like a robot. She's coming! Samantha, the police are right around the corner. M mommy's smiling now. I think it's okay for me to come out. Samantha, stay where you are. Mommy? <laughs> Samantha? Samantha, the police are right outside. Mommy, please stop. You're scaring me. Samantha? Samantha? I don't want to eat that, Mommy. What do you mean it'll make me just like you? Where are we going, Mommy? Just then. I heard a piercing scream, and the line went dead. When the police finally arrived at the scene, they neither found Samantha nor her mother. In fact, the house didn't look like someone had ever lived in it. They reported that the lights didn't work at all. There was no furniture, and they found the decaying corpse of a dog which looked to have been dead for weeks in the middle of the living room. Insects, maggots, all kinds of detestable things were found slithering around the house. but. Not a trace of any living human being. Eventually, I quit my job the very next morning. That call has haunted me ever since then. I just couldn't comprehend my experience. My boss and the other officers were all adamant that they were sent to the wrong address. It was all deemed the fault of the dispatcher. Me. But I know I wasn't wrong. I know the address was right, and I know there was no error in the system. It wasn't my fault. I think about Samantha every day, and I pray that nothing bad happened to her. However, deep in my heart, I know that someone was pretending to be her mother, and that someone did something unspeakable to her, something unthinkable. I will never forget that scream. This is a disturbing story that happened to me about four years ago. It was around December. 
the snowstorms were starting to come in, and it was becoming very cold. Me and my wife were trying to get everything we could before winter started, mainly food and supplies. The problem was is that we didn't have a car. We couldn't afford it. I worked a low-wage job and was making enough to barely pay rent on our shitty old apartment. My wife usually stayed home and took care of our two-month-old baby, and I was doing the best I could to save enough money for a car. And finally, after months of saving, I had enough. One day I came home and told my wife the good news, and she was relieved. The next day we went to our local car dealership. There was only two cars on the lot, and they weren't the greatest, but the prices were very low, and as long as it got us from point A to point B, we would be happy. So we did what we needed to. Paid for it, got the keys, and drove off. The car was from 1984 and was pretty run down, but it drove just fine. Six months later, I was cleaning out the car when I noticed something odd under the back seat. It was something that I had never seen before. Despite having checked the car multiple times at this point, I looked closer, but I would need a flashlight in order to see it clearly. It looks like a black box of some kind. I thought it was just something the previous owner had left behind. Finally, curiosity got the best of me and I pulled it out of the car. It was an old VHS tape, marked Happy Memories. It looked to be around the same age as the car. I didn't know what to do with it. I just thought it was some old home video from the previous owner, although it was pretty strange that it was hiding underneath the seat. While I didn't want to invade anyone's privacy, I decided that I wanted to see what was on the tape to satisfy my curiosity. I went up to my attic and found my old VHS player. I hadn't used it since high school, back when I threw parties and me and my buddies would watch movies on it. It was a bit dusty, but it still worked just fine. I turned it on and put in the tape. It started off pretty normal. It was a family during Christmas, people walking around, opening gifts, etc. Then things got a little uncomfortable. The husband and wife began arguing while the children were crying in the background. The argument got more and more intense as it went on. I could not make out exactly what was being said. The camera cut off and the screen was black before cutting back into a scene that was so fucked up that it kept me up for weeks after. I will never get this image out of my head. The camera was now set up in a dark room. There was torture weapons hanging from the walls and dismembered body parts scattered across the floor. The same wife and children from the beginning were now on their knees chained together and sobbing. That's about as much detail as I'm willing to go into. There was also a man in the room whose face was cut off from the camera's view. The man stepped out of frame and switched off the overhead light. And what he said next won't stop repeating in my head. I guess this is a happy memory for someone like me. After that, all that was heard was the horrified screams of the family. I had to turn off the tape. I couldn't take it anymore. I took the tape out and just stared at it for what seemed like hours. The images of the bodies, all the blood, the terrified faces of the family were now burnt into my mind. It was hours before I said a single word to anyone. I eventually called the police and explained what I had found. After weeks of investigation, they found out that this tape was of a family who had gone missing 32 years ago. They said that their house was demolished in 2003, and a car dealership was built in its place. The exact same place where I got the car. That's when it hit me. Thinking back, the car salesman looked a lot like the husband from the beginning of the video, except a lot older. Now that I think about it, he was kind of in a hurry to get us out of there after we bought the car, shortly after the shop was closed down, and is now abandoned. A lot of my friends went there over the years and said it was a really good place for a cheap car. I would pass it every day driving to work. I'm assuming the police followed up on all of this during their investigation, but I never heard of any arrests being made, or further updates on the case. As far as I know, that man is still out there.